Top 10 most comfortable sneakers for people that have wide feet. 2022 version, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So I wanna let you guys know this video is gonna be sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook. It's basketball championship season right now, so it's a great time to get in on some bets. And if you're new to DraftKings Sportsbook and you bet just $5, you actually get $150 in free bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app in the description of this video and use my code HESKICKS. That will enable you to get the $150 in free bets after you bet just $5. Now honestly, my favorite thing to do, and I've been betting on pretty much every single game just up to the playoffs. It's just fun to put $5 in here and there. What I like to do is do a same game part parlay and it increases your chances to win big. I think originally when I think of sports betting it was like bet $100 and you win $50 back. It just didn't seem like great odds. But if you do a same game parlay you can bet on each of the players how many points they're going to be scoring. You can also bet on how many assists and rebounds each player gets and so on. And when you combine all of those parlays into one it boosts your total payout to be significantly better. You can also bet like on five or six games at one time and then the payouts are going to be significantly more as well. If you just put in five dollars you could walk out with a couple hundred depending on what you bet. But if DraftKings Sportsbook is not available in your area yet, DraftKings hosts huge daily fantasy contests every day of the playoffs with millions up for grabs each week. Thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring this video. What is going on guys? Hess here. If you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and appreciate you all for stopping by and watching. If you guys enjoy the video and it's insightful for you, please drop a like on the video. So I did this video a couple years ago and some of these sneakers in that list, they don't actually make them anymore or they're just not in production anymore. So I wanted to give you guys an updated list for 2022. Quick disclaimer though, this is just my opinion. If you guys have a difference in opinion, please leave a comment in the comment section of other sneakers that you guys would recommend uh, for the wide feet gang out there. Now I'm thinking wide feet gang, but I'm not thinking like crazy, crazy duck feet, wide feet gang or something like that. So if you have like extremely wide feet, some of these sneakers just might not work for you. If you have a wide foot and a higher arc than I do, some of these sneakers might not work for you either. So everybody's foot's different is the point I'm trying to drive here. Let's go ahead and start off with a runner up though. And that is the Yeezy Boost 700. This is the Wave Runner version or that model, not the um, minivan version or the MNVN version. The MNVN one is not wide foot friendly in my opinion. It's really hard to even get on your foot. Uh, from what I found, you have to go half size up and it's just not very comfortable in that regard. The Easy Boost 700 though, with the regular tongue Wave Runner version, it's a pretty nice wide foot friendly option for people. I actually like the fact that it's really wide based and it's one of those shoes that I think is pretty comfortable as well. So I wanted to throw that in a runner up spot, but there's a lot more comfort sneakers out there that are a lot more noteworthy. So let's go ahead. So the number 10 spot goes to the Adidas ZX22. Now this is a brand new shoe that just came out and it's probably not gonna be in rotation handful of years from now, but the model is actually really comfortable. I just did a review of them on my channel. They retail at $120. They fit true to size in my opinion. And it is just a really nice, comfortable ride. Now it has Jet Boost in the midsole, not to be confused with the regular Boost, which the difference being that the pellets of Boost are actually just a little bit smaller. And honestly, it's actually pretty well felt though in this shoe. I would say the ZX22 is more comfortable than the Easy Boost 700, which is why obviously it's in the number 10 spot instead of a runner up. But it's a really comfortable shoe, especially if you have wide feet. Now there's two other options in this a little Adidas universe right here that I would mention as well. The Azaleas as well as the Oswegos. Both of them or any of them in some form are usually Usually available on Adidas website and I'll link them all in the description of the video if you guys are interested in buying any of the shoes that I'm going to be talking about. Also I do get a small kickback from the sale of the purchase if you guys actually make a purchase from my links and I greatly appreciate it. It definitely supports the channel when you guys do that. Moving into the number nine spot which is a really crazy soft squishy shoe and one that New Balance offers in wide feet versions and that is the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V2. This is a really really comfortable shoe and I know that they have more offerings for the Rebel a fuel cell line that's going to be coming out. There's the, obviously the V3 that's just around the corner, but there's also like a higher stack uh, fuel cell version of a training shoe that looks really amazing too. And I will be reviewing those hopefully on the channel uh, in the upcoming months when they release. So make sure you subscribe and check back on the channel. And I will be posting those reviews because honestly, I feel like those two models are probably going to replace this one. Fuel Cell Rebel V2 probably has the softest and squishiest midsole out of all the shoes on the countdown. It's incredibly soft. Uh, the fuel cell is actually kind of springy too, so it does snap back and bounce. It might be a little bit too unstable for some people's uh, taste. It's just one of those shoes that if you want something ultra soft and squishy, this is a really great option uh, for your feet. And the retail is $130. And again, I would say true to size. Now again, they come in like extra wide versions of these, which is something that New Balance is great for, which is why there's quite a few New Balance on this countdown. But uh, number nine spot. Number eight spot, we're going to do it, man. We're actually going to go with the Nike Air Monarch 4. Now this is like... One of those dad shoes, the barbecue shoes, the the Father's Day shoe, or whatever you want to call it. 
They come in wide boy versions though. Now it's not like a crazy comfort setup on the um, midsole or anything like that, but it's just an all around well-built pair of sneakers that is tried and true. Uh, grandparents to great great grandparents it's one of those shoes that is actually uh, pretty awesome and I have a pair of them I actually converted mine to a wave runner which was hilarious but uh but yeah it's, it's just a fun dad shoe and definitely a wide foot friendly shoe and I mean honestly if you have monster wide feet like this is just one of those shoes that is an easy option for you for $65 at retail yeah it's a monarch yeah there's like a monarch cult following as well and yeah, a lot of people like to make fun of the Monarch shoe, but ultimately it does uh, deliver with the wide feet shoe and it is pretty comfortable. Now moving to the other end of the spectrum, probably the most expensive shoes on this countdown, we have the New Balance 990 V5. Now this is a really expensive shoe at $190 or $85 around there, but they do come in wide and extra wide versions, which makes the shoe pretty awesome. Also, it's the most premium pair of sneakers on the countdown as well. Really premium materials in here, usually very premium suede. They also do have an all vegan version for those people interested. But with the insole and the midsole, the way it's set up, it's just an all around comfortable pair of sneakers. It's not the ultimate cloud-like squish. It's not like super mega squishy on feet. It's definitely more of one of the firmer ones on the countdown along with like the Monarchs. It's kind of like the, the older style of comfort, but it's one that is tried and true. And that style has been around for decades because it works. Comfort doesn't always mean max soft squishy which is funny coming from my channel i know but uh sometimes you need like a firmer shoe you don't want to wear soft squishy crazy squishy shoes like all the time having something a little bit firmer is a smart option as well and this is one of the best ones on the market in my opinion especially for wide feet uh, if you're looking for like more of a premium product they have some great colorways but the traditional gray colorway is probably the best way to go just because new balance and gray go together so number six spot goes to a newcomer to this countdown a newcomer to myself recently just did a review on these and was blown away it is the a6 gel nimbus 24 and they have wide feet versions of this shoe as well which is why i have it on the countdown you have the ff blast plus in the midsole of this one which makes it a really nice soft squishy ride having a wide foot version with this like stretchy uh knit toe box is super nice but the stretchy tongue on these shoes are absolutely crazy like, like the tongue is so stretchy i just like the way uh the tongue fits the heel collar is really comfortable as well it's like made of some interesting looking material but very very comfortable but the midsole is where this shoe shines it's definitely a very comfortable midsole lots of squishy feel underneath you also have uh, some gel pairing in the midsole as well so it's like a hybrid cushioning system but it's really good and for the price point i think it's like 150 160 definitely a good option and again link in the description uh to cop if you guys are interested i was very very surprised by asics though and something i'm going to be paying way more attention to uh, as more models are going to be releasing this year but this is a standard model that is definitely very comfortable and shout out to you guys who actually recommended this model for me to try so the number five spot's going to go to the nike invincible run or the invincible run 2 because that one's gonna be coming out. Uh, by the time this video comes out, the, that shoe might actually already drop, who knows, because they just keep just randomly dropping shoes through the year. Invincible Run though has Zoom X on the midsole through the entire midsole, it's incredible. It's a takedown running shoe from like the Alpha Fly series, which has the Zoom X in the midsole. A couple years ago, we had the Pegasus Turbos, which was one of my favorites for the last two years or three years, and that had Zoom X and React in the midsole. Dual density foam was amazing in that, but this is just Zoom X in the midsole, and. It is a beefy stack of Zoom X, so if you want cloud-like, soft, squishy feel, this is definitely one of the shoes that delivers. It's really good and a very wide base on these things as well, which is why it's in this countdown for wide feet friendly sneakers. If you guys have tried any of the sneakers that I'm talking about in this video, and you guys agree or disagree, again, please leave a comment in the comment section. But I feel like this was a really good one, one that I wore quite a bit. Excited for the next version to be able to compare uh, notes from the first version and uh, expect an updated video on that once those release. Number four spot's gonna be a controversial one, sort of, and that's the Ultra Boost DNA. Now the Ultra Boost 22 is pretty snug around the collar of the shoe. So people that have wide feet or have a hard time getting that sock-like shoe on their foot, these are kind of snug on the upper section of the shoe. So because of that, I didn't really include the Ultra Boost 22 on the countdown. Although it fits my foot just fine, it might not be wide enough for the average wide footer, I guess, if there is an average wide footer. Ultimately, I decided to choose the Ultra Boost DNA because it does have the older style of tongue, which I do personally prefer, and I like the overall fit of that. Now, the other alternative that I would throw out there, which is an amazing shoe, is the Ultra Boost 21 Cold Ready, I believe is the name of the shoe. It has the old school style tongue with 
the midsole of the Ultra Boost 21 and 22. It's really a nice match made there, and it's a very comfortable pair of sneakers. I had to throw the Ultra Boost in this list, though. It's always going to be in the countdown for comfort sneakers, usually. For wide foot friendly, that's the only part that's somewhat questionable. I think that Adidas does a pretty good job of making wide foot friendly sneakers across the board, depending on, obviously, the models. Uh, so the Ultra Boost is just one of those. It has a wide enough base that I figured I would include it in this countdown in the number four spot. Personally, love the Ultra Boost. You can't see it, but I have a whole dedicated wall over on this side, uh, floor to ceiling of Ultra Boost. So I know it's not mostly on the back. There's some back here, but most of them are over here. But the number four spot goes to the Ultra Boost. Number three spot goes to another pair of Nikes, and this is a Nike Pegasus 38 slash 39 wide foot version. So uh, the 38 had a wide foot version. I'm assuming the 39 once we actually see it coming out, which we've seen it actually released in some places, just not everywhere yet. But um, I'm waiting to get my hands on a pair. Any which way, they have a wide foot version of the Pegasus line. The Pegasus line, for those that have never tried it, is a really comfortable one. The newer versions now have Nike React along with Nike Air Zoom, but it's a really comfortable setup on the midsole. Also, obviously with a wide fit version, it makes these things a little bit more lucrative. And it's just the, the daily trainer workhorse shoe that runners will say that's the case. A lot of my running friends that have just been traditionally runners usually have ran in the Pegasus if they run in anything from Nike. And it's an all around shoe that you can wear literally to the gym, work out, grocery store, park. It's like one of those great shoes that you can do everything in. But I wanted to throw it in the mix. Number three spot on the countdown. Number two spot goes to Hoka Clifton 8 or the Rincon 3, to be honest. Both of those are really incredible shoes. They do have wide foot friendly versions of each of these and Hoka does a great job for wide feet. It's one of the craziest sneakers out there because it's such a huge stack of cushion. You'd think that it'd be like unbalanced and you'd be wobbly and stuff but the way that they make the shoes i don't know they squish just perfect for the most part you don't have to worry about rolling an ankle in these even though the, the cushion stack is so incredibly high but for anybody that hasn't tried the clifton that's the one i would start with the clifton 8 is amazing clifton 9 is going to be coming out again soon so i will be doing a video on those once they come out as well but i absolutely love the clifton from the 7 8 now on to the 9 uh, it's just an all-around great pair of sneakers for somebody that wants really nice, soft, squishy feel on her feet. It's kind of like a recovery shoe, even though it's like a running sneaker. But even though it is primarily a running sneaker, it's definitely like an all-around pair of sneakers that you can wear anywhere. It's a vacation-type sneaker as well. You can travel with this one. Your feet will be very comfortable if you go to Disneyland and like wherever you're going to be walking a lot. It's just a, a great walker as well as a runner. But definitely has like max cushion in these things. They're set up really, really nice. Definitely recommend trying them if you haven't. True to size, in my opinion, again, actually all of these that I've mentioned for the most part are true to size. If you guys have a difference in opinion though, please leave a comment in the comment section. But the Rincon 3 is actually a little bit of a cheaper option at 120 versus the 140. Personally, I like the Clifton 8s better, but the Rincon is really, really good as well. So we made it to the number one spot on the countdown. And if you guys found this countdown helpful or informative to you guys, please drop a like in the video, subscribe for more of these top 10 list videos. I'll be doing more of them more often now. Uh, that I'm doing this full time. I've been doing it full time for almost a year now, which is crazy. But the number one spot we have goes to my favorite sneaker for the last three years. It is the New Balance 1080 V12. Now, I know some people are like, wait, what? Why would that shoe be number one? This shoe has been so incredible for the last three versions that I've tried. That's where I started with the 10, 11, and 12. Uh, but the midsole and the overall ground feel of this shoe is just one of my favorites to put on feet. It's not like the heaviest shoe, it's not the lightest shoe, it's not the softest and squishiest shoe, it doesn't have the most roll, but there's something about this model that literally just fits my foot perfectly and I absolutely prefer it um, most of the time when I'm going out and about. It's probably my most worn model for the last three years, but it's a really solid pair and I love the Fresh Foam X and the midsole. It's not as squishy as like the New Balance Fuel Cell, but it definitely has a nice soft squishy feel on her foot. Uh, not too much, not too little. I feel stable in the shoe, it's breathable. All around it's just an excellent pair of sneakers and one that I look forward to New Balance creating a newer version every single year. Although I could just go back to the 10 and be happy with the 10 and 11 uh, as well. So if you guys want to buy the previous year models, I'll try to link them in the description as well. They do have a wide foot and extra wide versions though for the wide feet gang, which I'm happy to say that they have the extra wide versions of as well. I usually get a wide version and I'm happy with that. And they do run true to size in my opinion at about $160. So they're not cheap by any means, but uh, you get a really, really good shoe. And I don't think that most people that buy the shoe will be like, oh, I regret buying them. Personally, for me, I think it's a great investment for your feet and one that you'll find yourself very happy in. It's an all day, everyday shoe. And again, one of my favorites through the last handful of years, but that's my top 10 list. If I missed a really important one that I totally didn't think about, leave a comment in the comment section. Obviously coming up with a top 10 list like this, it takes a lot of thought, but there is definitely some gaps that could be missed. So apologize if I missed any. Again, if you guys wanna buy any of the shoes that I talked about in the countdown, 
Check the link in the description and is much appreciated when you guys use my links. So again, if you're interested in DraftKings Sportsbook app, check the link in the description. Use my code HESKICKS when you sign up and bet just $5 and you'll get $150 in free bets instantly. Have a good rest of the day. Appreciate y'all and subscribe and check back for more videos soon. All right, have a good one. See you guys.